Tomwitz Ballahin Hail and Shaw Hartel and Chinyi Kampa. We're all gathered around the campfire here virtually, and we're going to be talking about Unveilge America. Tatahin and Liam Togum Hain, a Taishul America, Ogusa, a Chagas Nabelge. I have many years experience teaching Irish in the States, on the East Coast, the West Coast, and places where there's no coast at all. And everywhere I go, being Dini Corkesh Dorm, do you know St. Liam O'Connor? And I'd say, how do you know Liam O'Connor? And they all talk about Edgeskail. And more people in America have learned Irish in Edgeskail and Donegal than anywhere else in the world. So that's St. Liam O'Connor. He should be here today, but unfortunately, he can't make it. So, by a Liam O'Connor Mark and Nua, our Kanhiad Lad, we have plenty for the I went out to New York to a sophist to teach Irish to the teachers or to do a, a workshop with the teachers of Daltina Gaelia. And at that time, the leading lights there were Ethel Brogan and Barra O'Donovan, God rest the two of them, they've gone to their award. And taken up from them, we now have Liam Giddery and Eileen Zorel, great people. Liam and I go to Milwaukee every year uh, to the Irish Fest there and we teach at the summer school. And there's great work going on there all the year from John Gleason and Barbara Nihilga. And another place that Liam and I go every year is over to San Francisco, where Nicky Ragsdale has been running a Jerushach in Yugeltochta for many years. Everywhere I go, I'm amazed at the amount of people who are speaking Gaelge in the States. And if I could just mention a couple of places in particular where there's great work going on. Evergreen College up in Washington State, Sean Williams, and she is a Crave School Ailoch Nahora Nyukta and Shanmos. Down in Catherine and Angle or San in uh, Los Angeles, we have Katrina Weaver and herself and Arj O'Neill and Sheila Birmingham are working hard there, her son Nagwelge. An old friend of mine up in the Twin Cities, Will Kenny has for many years been publishing a quarterly magazine called Ungwelgyar. Uh, he calls Minnesota Tir Nguelgya Roche, the land of the frozen Irish. Uh, Conrad Nguelgya, of course, are worthy of great credit for the work that they're doing all over the states, in Texas and Milwaukee and Washington, D.C., New York, etc., etc. And Sheena Nicanali, in Dublin, uh, has put together a fantastic uh, resource called Culture Club, and it's used widely all over the States. And as one mark maybe of the, the, the esteem in which the Irish language is held all over the States, we now have full-time lecturers in Gaelge in many places, in Boston College, Harvard, Notre Dame, Notre Dame, as they say there, the City University of New York, the University of New York itself, University of Pittsburgh, Elms College, College, Catholic University of America in DC, etc., etc. Full-time lecturers in Gwilge and all these places. Today, in the panel with us around the campfire, we have, first of all, Maureen Ikeja, Sean Haradu, Maureen Tafalcherod. Maureen is a Sihru Nagelge in Boston. La Common Nagelge with other Cardinal and Mike Newell and Peggy Nicloherty and loads of other people. Myrin is from an Mamin in Littermore and she is a beautiful singer in the Shan Nose style. She has won Corony Rieda and if you don't know what Corony Rieda is, it's the World Cup of Shan Nose singing. So <laughs> that when you hear Myrin singing, she's on YouTube. You'll, you'll understand how she won Corin Ireda. Another thing I'd love to say about Myreen is that she has, as we say in Gaelgiatan, Don Shulta Eki. She travels all over the world at her own expense, teaching Gaelgia and Shanno singing. So, Gormaigat, oh, Myreen. Jerry O'Sullivan, Jerry Sullivan there from Butte, Montana. He's here from Ireland's fifth province president of Granite Mountain Bank and well known for his work with Project Children. Tra Daro Ba'athair and Kateru Kwej to Winter Butte. 
and God knows how many Sullivans there are. And is there such a thing as a telephone directory now in America? But if there is, God knows how many Sullivans there are. Great Cork population there in Butte, Montana. Then we have Jerry O'Rahilly from Yardley in Pennsylvania, the man who invented or who started the first Grail School. And it's not a Grail School as we understand it here in Ireland. It's a different type of Grail School that he tells us about it himself. Uh, the AOH and Jerry are fund, they fund a two day immersion program teaching children about their Irish heritage. And then we have Parik O'Reilly, Far on Wildland Shaw, Feynmanach Margiochta TG Cahar. Craylan TG Cahar are Fudna Crenya. They broadcast all over the world now. And as Maureen said before the program started, an awful lot of people in America rely on the on TG Cahar itself and on Aquany TG Cahar, not only to learn but to promote the Irish language. Because the speech of TG Cahar. Correlation Lian Shandini, America, a top one two side, as in station, Telefisha, August Asna Hakwini. So, if I can go back to you, Maureen, would you tell us something about your work in Boston, Leatherhall? Well, Thomas and Charmaston, the only dig of Duche, August Camera, go will floor Shagail Gensha, August Hogram of Wanda Gail get her. Shields and then a shotoga, a good quantity of Gaelga. Ta on seem Samuelga, smart or to sa. Tarudan special to feed Vedicone. Ta should get a gleam all at a tanga, get a gleam all at a gultor. I was told he read a gultor, read a gold of dust. I was on chin, sig and shield, which has never fad a tacto flavor on tanga. So I'm here since eighty six in Boston and um, I've raised my children. With, through the Irish language. Now, those of them who are married and have children of their own are raising their kids with the Irish language. And one of the most beautiful things I found here and the most fascinating aspects of being an Irish immigrant here in the United States is that Americans have, they have such an interest, whether they have any connection at all to Ireland, but they, connected. First of all, the music moves them, the dance moves them, and then they realize that that is all stems and is rooted in the language. So they like, just, they want to know the language. And I've been involved with Common the Gaelga since I came here. I've taught for them. I, I coach for Rosetta Stone, and I am a, a consultant for MIT, their linguistics uh, program there, especially when, and I find it fascinating that MIT, that I can walk in there and they're interested in this language. Uh, it just brings me, I don't know, it brings me such pride when I think of my language. I think of my people, I think of the old neighbors, I think of my grandparents who spoke the language because that's all they had. And here it is where I'm on a platform, one of the most world known platforms, and they're interested in Ketal Kahanli roads. And you know, one thing that fascinates me near Lower Mission Berla Riv Yatsa, it's the first time that I've ever heard you speaking English, and you've a touch of an, of an American accent. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, if I have a little of an American accent, that's not my fault. It's the president's <laughs> not fault. Because they told us a long time ago in elocution, we were not to speak with shoes on our tongue. Bro. Oh, very good. Very good. Very good. Jerry O'Sullivan. Jerry Sullivan. Are you Sullivan or O'Sullivan? You were originally O'Sullivan, I'd say. The, uh... Uh, when they came over, they, they Americanized as quickly as they could. My mother and father came over, and uh, so they, they adopted Sullivan and dropped the O, although I've been tempted to pick it up again myself. So I heard a story, and I don't know is it true, about the influence of the Irish in Butte, that there was a guy who came over from Syria or somewhere, and his name was Mohammed Mossein, and he very quickly changed his name to Mohammed Murphy. 
to help his business along. <laughs> Did you hear that story, Jerry? Is it true? <laughs> I, but I, I, do, I know a couple of Odell's that you would swear came from Saudi Arabia. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So tell us about the work that you're doing up there. Uh, uh, Hasni Amar uh, and uh, Ryan Gwedega uh, in Butte, Montana, Fui uh, Ga, Gamela Hak, um, uh, uh, Gak, Gak Saura, uh, and, and, and Shah, uh, there is a, uh, Irish studies program at the University of Montana now that's taught, uh, by Trelock O'Riordan from Cork. And, um, uh, in the, in the summer program, we have taught over 200, uh, students, some of which have gone back to Ireland, uh, you know, for classes uh, in Belly Ferreter and other areas uh, of Ireland. Uh, we also have utilized a Fulbright students uh, in the regular classes at the University of Montana, but also in the summer program in Butte. Uh, we are, um, we're very proud of what we've done, and we should be listed with your group as as a, uh, a source of Irish language uh, no uh, doubt you should. Yeah. In the country. The, and the one thing I want to do, I do want to say is that I, I do think that the American people are uh, very much attuned to the Irish language and to the Irish culture. And, and I do think they see that as a, as a touching stone, even though they may be generations removed from, from Ireland, they still see themselves as Irish to some degree. So it's, it's very well received in this country. That's uh, and I do think when we do go back to Ireland, that the people there see uh, American students uh, learning and, and speaking the language. And I do think it, it encourages the, or fosters the language in Ireland itself. Oh, it does, yeah. And I see them every year, the students that come from UWM in Milwaukee, and they come to Glan Colum Kille for on the Colum Kill semester. And they're speaking Gaelic, and the people are amazed to hear it. And not only amazed, but delighted. And it, it gives us a great pride that our own language is so well received and so highly regarded all over the world. Jerry O'Rahala from Pennsylvania, tell us about the Girl Scout. Uh, sure. So I think I'm in the minority here where I might be one of the only ones that doesn't speak it. But that was one of the reasons that I was so interested in, uh, in the program that we run here. So my parents, when I was younger, they're both immigrants from Cork, would speak Irish to... Uh, keep my brother and I from understanding what they were talking about uh, as opposed to spelling things out like we might do these days. Uh, so our program is is a bit of immersive where we take uh, children from 6 to 17 years old and uh, teach them sport and history and cooking. And we have them do all these things. But one of the things that we do as well is have them uh, speak the language as much as they can. I heard you mention before that uh, you work with Dalton Nagalia and we have them come down uh, they've been with us every year. I believe this will be our 15th year, and they've been with us every year uh, teaching the kids, the, the younger ones, especially the seven, eight, nine-year-olds. They seem to absolutely love it. And while we can't give them uh, you know, enough in, in the two days that we have to, to understand everything, what we try to do is give them a, an understanding that there is a different language out there that their ancestors did speak. And and show them how beautiful it actually is and give them the uh, tools to hopefully uh, get interested in learning about it. Um, as well then, once they, once they kind of graduate from our program, we offer a scholarship through my Hibernians where we send two to three kids back to the, uh, the Galen in Donegal. And uh, that's been running for about 10 years now. Fantastic. And the children, oh, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, the children that come back have, have done nothing but, but, uh, rave over it and it's not easy for children that don't speak the language much at all to go and, and be so immersed in it but they've all come back and we've had actually two or three that have paid on their own to go back themselves the next year so and the program itself the Irish to come back with yeah. a great year from Ulster yes good Ab absolutely so it's right. a great program and the children seem to love it fantastic Coke Arja has that well done and congratulations Podigorania Tell us about our food in the Kenya and what you're doing in America. 
Yeah, uh, Keen Sore, as Gramahagi, uh, as Sultan Desho, her scoring, um, scale, TG Carr, as some Shenso de Inchuk. Um, I suppose I'll go back to my own first experience of, of, uh, the United States was I was just out of college, probably about 95, 96, and my first job, and I was working for a company down in Cork at the time, and, uh, I was sent to Kentucky. Um, to Louisville, Kentucky. But as I had a lot of relations in Boston, including Maureen, who I'm related to through marriage, uh, I decided to stop off for a couple of days. And of course, you were immersed in the Irish language in Boston with family and with friends and, and all that. But it wasn't probably until subsequently then when I started working with TG Carr and in and around 2003, 2004, we launched The Player as it's known, or as it was known then, TG Carabao, where we streamed programs that would have been broadcast on the terrestrial television, and we were making them available to people abroad. So like you mentioned, uh, Ray, at the beginning of the conversation, um, we went to Milwaukee, and we publicised the player in Milwaukee. And I suppose what really made me realise, we'll say the work that was being done in America and particularly by Liam and his colleagues was when two particular people came up to me, one from one family from Little Rock, uh, Little Rock, Arkansas, and another young man who was, I'd say, only about 22 or 23 from Detroit. And I wouldn't have associated those places with the Irish language, but we had a full conversation in Irish. And I remember the, the, the young guy asking him, you know, what his, where was he from in Ireland several times. He had never been to Ireland. He was like the third or fourth generation. And that's when I realised the importance of the language to them and learning it and making, I suppose, making the resources that we had uh, available to them in as easy a way as possible. And I think that's probably what's happened over the last 10, 15 years now since then. Uh, the player has developed so much that almost everything that you would see here in Ireland, you can you can uh, access now across the United States and across the world. Fantastic. Yeah, Tashan. What in Louis Tuhan, TG Cahar and Jenny Gatus, August and Tawok, the one in Leshna Hakwin, Yukon, TG Cahar or Fai. Have we still got a couple of popular out with Shen Lagal? Well, Tasha, I'm Tawok, the Kerfat. Never was the Michel Dossa. Uh, Nira and Yaktafadi oil or Radio Magaltakta is coming on Vima Kerklar, Klar Gilge, a Lohan and Chair WNTN, Erfash, Zemli on the Bagnach, a Go Fart like Otis Kiltari, Agus and Shin, Louis Sahonic TG Kahar, um, Vima Dinam, Radera Kangala Yama, Agus Dina. So when I first started, when I came here, all we had, I remember I was at WNTN uh, in partnership with Coltis Kotori presenting a program completely in the Irish language, every word and all the music from Ireland and all the songs. And all I had was little recordings uh, that somebody would send me from Ireland, even uh, from Radio Magaltachta. And then TG Cahar came along. So it became a visual, and it's so much easier for people oh, yeah. to, you know, visualize something. And especially for me when I was teaching the songs, and I, I, it was an amazing, it's really amazing how, how we can sell Ireland uh, and the language through TG Carr because both culturally, both the language, the music, the songs, and especially tourism, you can have a, it's, a, it's an amazing, amazing, um, and I think it's adding at least to to promoting the language in a way that it probably doesn't in Ireland. Correct, correct. Jerry Sullivan, um, in in the work that you're doing there with your uh, with with your Jerishaft and your Gaelia and your your Irish language classes, are you getting any support financially or otherwise from Ireland from any source in Ireland? Well, <clears throat> absolutely. From uh, from the Irish government, they do provide an annual support for the uh, Irish Studies program at the University of Montana, as well as uh, assist with the Fulbright uh, scholarship people coming over to uh, to participate. Uh, we couldn't run the program without the Irish government, and 
and I, I, and I have to echo what's being said about TG Cotter because it, it's, it's a, it's a wonderful tool to have in order and to see young people speaking the language and using the language on that, um, uh, I think is, a, is an inspiration to the younger people in this country to, uh, to pick it up. Great. You're all being very nice. Has there nobody got any complaints at all? <laughs> Jerry O'Rahale, Jerry O'Rahale, and the Guelph Guild, the Hibernians fund this, do they? The Hibernians started this uh, many years ago. We do now uh, run fully on a grant from the Irish government uh, currently. They, uh, we, we put in for the grant, showed them what we could do. We had uh, some members of the uh, New York consulate come down and visit us uh, a couple of years ago and uh, seemed to really enjoy what we were doing and believed what we were doing. And we've uh, been in contact with them. I've been up to the consulate a couple of times to, to speak to them. And they, uh, they, the Irish government now funds us. Yeah. I, I think the, um, the Irish consuls in various places in the States make a great mark on the, the um, for example, Brendan O'Quilly was recently in Boston. Isn't that right, Maureen? Oh, uh, he didn't enter. Oh, fantastic. Then going to do this far, a and child. One of the best people that ever crossed the ocean. Yeah. He did amazing work, and he used every tool as, at his disposal, and he was there for you at every turn. That's right, yeah. Hardik, well, to us, the last edition made the tall Larai, Aku Larai, Kushaf, we teach you care, August, and Kaigable to Brodo, La Shawel. Ah, talking, sir, August, is the way Ray, if you want Solar Honic Covid, er a Tarshik and your er fad, Mlian, the Vishagest and Fact is the honor cold tradition. Before Covid came to all our doors, uh, earlier this year, one of our marketing plans this year was to do a promotion on Irish music uh, via the player uh, abroad, but particularly uh, to the US market. And uh, of course, I suppose it couldn't have come at a better time in terms of we were to kickstart this in March, in and around initially around St. Patrick's Day. But as it happens with the lockdowns and, and everybody having more time to, to view content, uh, the figures that we got for that campaign not only doubled, trebled, quadrupled, but tenfold the number of times that we got. And what we did is we didn't target the main areas of America that would be associated with with uh, the Irish, particularly first generation Irish. So so we targeted other areas in America uh, and we did that through through research. And again, the number of streams and the number of live streams that that um, that we got from that campaign. And the reason is, I suppose, music is not necessarily language led. But the idea for for us here is that they would access the player and then see the content that was there across documentaries, across entertainment, across music, drama, etc. So music was a way to entice them in. But once they were in, then they could see all the box sets, they could see all the, the hours of entertainment. And as the lads mentioned there, particularly the younger generation, the kids, you know, that are learning it, or maybe the, the second generation of Irish people that immigrated many years ago that want to keep in touch with the language. There's a huge resource there for children uh, as a learning tool. Jerry O'Rahale, if I can come back to you for a second. Um, the other Jerry, Jerry Sullivan there mentioned the... Uh, the people on the Fulbright scheme, these young teachers and students coming over from Ireland to spend a year either learning or teaching in the universities. Um, have you been able to make any use of their good offices at all? We have not yet, but after talking or listening to you guys here, it was good. my intention to reach out. I've been taking notes and I was going to uh, to reach out to them to do so. Yeah, it's a fantastic scheme, and that's one of the benefits of this campfire is is opening people's eyes to what's available out there. Um, and TG Cahar has got the bull of us, Realtors in the Heron and the Irish consuls and uh, and the consulates themselves have all got the bull of us. And uh, the Fulbright is great. One of the things that amazed me when I went out there first was speaking to people, us great, yeah. Nach Narquer Kos Reeve or Hall of Naharan. They never put a foot in Ireland. They had no Irish ancestors, and here they were speaking Gaelic. What is it 
about this language of ours or what is it about the people of this country that entices the people to do it? Any ideas on that one? It's the music of the language, Kjol and Sanga. Kjol, yeah, and even the Kjol, the, the, the traditional music itself, you know, some of them that I met, I'd say, what, enti what enticed you into this? Well, it was the music first, and then I, from, as you said, Parik, I went from the music, then into the singing, and in order to understand the singing properly, they had to have the language. Well, Akharja, you know, Tan Tam, and Yeg Brahorn, August Ta, on Chinyi Kampa Shah, a Dolan Yeg, Ach, Arnos Lukran, the Gailia, America, Neil Shai, and Yeg Wasa, I log as last for a rich day, Goramila Mohegov, as a bad parchak, August Goramai Heg, Tiji Kahara, say Shahori, August Goramai. I uh marching on my or was a card to my first as a show or fall doing or was in chance of words doing but a play uh how he in the goal get america or was her foot in the crane yeah got a meal my ego for fad or was good over gs line of wildness if Rose, uh, Ray, or a kid, my head, I was shawled, panic, the wound, Higlimo, can you kind of land, come, kill you. Thank you, Ray. Uh, send our greetings on behalf of everyone in America who I meet who has studied Irish at Edges Gale and Glan, come, kill you. Send our greetings to Liam O'Kenny. Going, boil and boys, or to RSD Gilliga, as in a session, Shin Oru, it was Foster, boys to TT Carr. It's absolutely amazing as far as I'm concerned. You can have speakers from Boot Montana, from Boston, from Pennsylvania. As well as as well as Ray from Dublin, of course, Maureen in Boston, and all able to talk about the great work they're doing to promote the Irish language.